Hello, my name is Jonathan Lucas. Tonight I will be showing you how to use Microsoft Visual Studio.net to dynamically place controls on a form using the Visual Basic language. I have Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 open on my desktop. I will go to File, New Project, and it will be a type Windows Form Application. I'll just give it a name here. Let's say Dynamic Controls and wait for it to load up. Okay, first off, the only control we will put on the page using the Visual Designer will be a tab control. And we'll go ahead and resize it so it fills up most of the page and then delete the individual tabs and leave uh, this blank tab control on the page. And since we'll be creating this dynamically at runtime, this isn't something that we can hard code into the form. And so first off, after we've done this, we will create a new class. And this class will inherit from the checkbox class. So we'll call it custom checkbox VB. And we want to import System dot windows dot forms inherits checkbox. This will be pretty simple. We'll just make a new sub for it uh, with a value for the name. And all this is going to do. is instantiate this checkbox with the name. Now when you create an instance of this checkbox it will not automatically show up on the form. And what we're going to do here is create another class which will inherit from the tab page. So we'll call this custom tab page just to keep with the naming convention. And again this will inherit from, well, import rather, from system.windows.forms inherits tab page. Public sub new. Uh, we're going to pass in an argument to give this tab a name, and this name is what we will use to used to identify this on the control so it won't just be a, a blank blank title up there and then just to show you we can pass in any objects that we want to I'm just gonna put a generic object right here and you can use this to um, create data bindings for for the controls on your web page you can use this uh, for pretty much just about anything you can create a structure that has all the properties that you want to want to have like system.color or um, whichever data bindings once again uh, any events um, this all could also be an interface that you can pass in so that this can be reusable with, with with different classes so this is going to be a um, actually let me show you a pretty cool feature in Visual Studio.10 Visual Studio 10.net I'm going to create well I'm going to make a reference call to a method that doesn't exist I'm going to pass in an argument and as you can see it shows the little squiggly line but right here under error correction options you can click and it'll tell you you can either change it or generate a method stub what that does it just creates a blank method if the squiggly line goes away and it'll throw a new not implemented exception if you don't do something about that. Uh, let's give this a more meaningful name. By val num is integer. And what we're going to do with this tab page is initialize several checkboxes, several of our custom checkboxes. So first what we're going to do is take care of the location of these text boxes because if you didn't do anything about the location then they would all just be piled on top of each other. As in to 
structure equals 10. So this, these are going to just be the, the starting location for the checkboxes. And I like to use variables or constants as much as possible. So you don't have to retype the same number over and over again. You can just use a descriptive word. So there's one line. That's the number of pixels that um, I'm going to put between each checkbox uh, when I create them. So now I'm going to instantiate several checkboxes using the, the number that's been passed in for x as integer equals 1 to num. Okay. And with the location y, we're going to put all these checkboxes one on top of the other, one above another. So whenever we so whenever we uh, go th loop through this, it's going to increment that location y. So now we're going to create an instance of the custom checkbox. See, it's showing up with the name. And so I'm going to put checkbox number and x. So the first one will be checkbox number one, number two, and so forth. CCB dot location equals new system dot drawing dot point location x location y. And then a couple other things. I'm not sure. Well, it's, it's just to make them compatible with the form. Um, make them look nicer. Let's use auto size equals true. And then finally me.controls.add ccb. So this is going to put the custom checkbox onto the custom tab page that you're creating in the init combo box. And last of all, in constructor, let's put me.text is equal to name. Okay, now we're done with the custom tab page. Let's go back to form, our, our form that we have here. And uh, let's just put three three of these tab pages on here. For excess integer equals zero, two, three. Well, that actually put four. Um, now we'll make a new instance of a custom tab page during each of these iterations. Tab page. Tab number and X. And then we'll just make a new object just have something for the custom tab page dot new constructor. And once we make this uh, custom tab page instance, in its constructor it will automatically make three checkboxes to go on each of the custom tab pages on, on itself. So all we need to do now, me dot tab control one dot tab pages dot add and then the new instance of our tab page. So let's run this and see if it works. As you see here, we have tab number 0, 1, 2, and 3. We have these arrows, checkbox number 1 and 2. And the, uh, the recording software is making the checkboxes a little bit sluggish in my debug mode, but as you can see we have four tabs, numbers 0 through 3, and they all are populated with checkboxes. Uh, once again, you can uh, use this, you can, might be able to change around some of the values inside your custom tab page as you're initializing these checkboxes in order to make them more descriptive, um, but the possibilities here are um, are quite big because now you can you, you might be able to load from an XML file all the, the tabs and, and controls that you want using the same form the same methods on the form you know, such as save and refresh and all that to um, to show your data but now if you want to change your interface you don't have to go in and, and rebuild the entire project you can just do it dynamically either from an XML file or inside the code so I hope you've enjoyed this um, I've really enjoyed making this and if you have any comments, please leave them below, and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks.